Tio style. <laughs> Did we have a crash? Had a little crash. <laughs> See if I get him on the over-under. Antonio. Yes, please. I'm trying to drive. What about a dirt bike? That's why you shouldn't pick a BMW. Jay eats nothing green. So. Welcome, everybody. We've got a special one for you today. Five years, 10 million views, and countless likes and comments. The Audrey Museum Network has been putting smiles on faces. Now it all comes down to this, a celebration of 50,000 subscribers. We can't thank you enough, and we look forward to producing plenty of more content for you, our loyal viewers, on our road to 100,000. But without further ado, let's get into it here at R1 Indoor Karting in Lincoln. It's the 50,000 subspecial 2024 Rhode Island Grand Prix. So, we achieved our milestone. Thanks to you, we passed that 50,000 subscriber mark. And we put out a poll a little while ago to ask what you wanted us to do to celebrate that milestone. And the question was whether you wanted to see a kart race between me and the ABS guys, or a question and answer. So, we actually decided to combine both. So, we're going to have this great karting race here at our friend's facility, R1 Indoor Karting Entertainment Center in Lincoln, Rhode Island. And during the race, I'm going to be asked the questions that you sent in. So, we'll see how this goes. Uh, one of the things, of course, which fascinates me is the fact that these guys, A, S, and B, <laughs> are, you know, they don't always play from the top of the deck. In fact, you'll see a lot of that in this program where they're really not only pulling from the bottom of the deck, they're pulling from a deck that's in the next room. <laughs> uh, for instance, you know, it, it's interesting the way they put together the ABS racing team. I mean, they picked up this guy, Antonio uh, Mangiagatti, I think his name is, and uh, yeah. he was this real... Uh, I think that means eats cats, don't yeah, 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 that, that's him. <laughs> All right. And he was this real superstar in the junior, junior formula in, in superbike racing, and he graduated to MotoGP, but he left the team in the middle of a race because they wouldn't serve gluten-free pizza. That's true. He was furious. He's like, I'm out of here. It's all set. So, so he's here now, and he's bringing a certain kind of a, an energy that those only the two-wheelers have. And of course, uh, there's this other guy, Benchester, which is like a single name, like Cher or Beyonce, like yeah. Benchester. I think he's called Benchester because he is the shadow of the elusive team owner, Ben Mercer. So in order not to keep, to keep them confused, uh, Benchester, uh, does this. And he, of course, comes from the world of drifting. Mm -hmm. And he is the <laughs> champion, the world champion of the North Kingstown Drifting Association. <laughs> now, of course, it's not affiliated with any other national or international body, but nonetheless, I understand that the feats he pulls off in his driveway, an especially modified cutlass convertible, are <laughs> unbelievable. And last but certainly not least, and this is probably the most imaginative move that they've made, the most they pulled as in well. Sean O'Donnell from the Scary Truck League. Now, the Scary awesome. Truck League is sort of like between monster trucks and, and, and tractor pulling. Apparently, it's something that's done where you try to do great long distance drives while pulling people's cars in a trailer behind you. You have to go as fast as you can Hoss. without damaging the car in the trailer. I understand he's managed to do this once or twice. Isn't that right, Sean? Once. Yeah. Once. <laughs> okay, so that makes him the champion because there's nobody else in the league, in fact, but he's got a great fan base. It's true. His lovely wife and one of his two children. <laughs> so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens here. The one here. who doesn't talk. Uh, yeah, exactly, the one who doesn't talk. Um, but he is a subscriber to the Dream Team Network, and that's all that counts. So let's take this track and see what happens, see what you have to say, and see what I have to say in response. You ready to go, guys? Game on. Hey, Robert, you're, you're ready to go. Let's go. <sighs> okay. Ekutikwi. Mesa fuoko. Velocita. Geschwindigkeit. Io sono la velocità. Il vincitore. Tre perdenti. Mangio i perdenti a colazione. Colazione? Forse avrei dovuto fare colazione. Uh, uh, no. La colazione potrebbe andare bene per me. No, rimane concentrato. Sono più veloce che veloce. Più veloce che veloce. Più veloce che veloce. Fulmine! It's going to be lights out, away we go for Donald Osborne only. <laughs> the jump star. The jump star. That's a penalty coming. Let's 
up to Donald and it's been half a lap. <laughs> All right, I know you're busy holding off the boys, but we got to answer these viewer questions. So are you ready for the first one? I am ready as I will be. All right, Donald. If you could have one car for the rest of your life, what would it be? It would be a uh, Fiat Autovu Supersonic. Fantastic. Very quick Whoa. answer with that one. Did we have a crash? Had a little crash. Okay. The guys crashed into me. <laughs> that's the way they are. Well, that's a good thing there's no taillights on there. But in that vein, Precisely. what is your favorite taillight design? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, probably my favorite taillight design would be on a 1958 Edsel. Fantastic. Love that taillight design. Sort of like a boomerang. Absolutely perfect. This video would not be possible without the help of our friends from R1 Indoor Karting and Entertainment Center. R1 Indoor Karting, located in Lincoln, Rhode Island, stands as a premier indoor karting facility, featuring a state-of-the-art multi-level electric karting track with dynamic turns and changes in elevation. Dart City, a groundbreaking interactive dart concept designed for bars and entertainment venues that seamlessly blend innovative technology with a timeless appeal of traditional darts. Axe Bar, an exhilarating experience featuring 10 state-of-the-art throwing lanes, a full bar, and a talented group of Axe coaches. Time Mission, an indoor mission room concept for all ages, featuring 25 to 32 immersive portals challenging players' intellect, strength, coordination, and speed. We have another viewer asking, can I tour the Audrain car collection? Well, yes, if you're a member of the museum, and we have special occasions when our members and donors uh, make a donation to the museum, we're very happy to reward them for their support by offering a car tour. So if you contact the uh, Audrain Museum in our membership uh, area, they'll be able to uh, help you out with that. But the hammer time. As Jorge Lorenzo would say in MotoGP, it's hammer time. Martillo style. <laughs> what might be your next car purchase? Oh, that's a really tough one. Um, it's hard to say because I buy cars so often on emotion and impulse. I uh, bought two cars recently in the last three months that I had no intention of buying at all because they were just there and they spoke to my heart. And I thought, why not? So I think that I just sort of keep my eyes open and, and, and look for opportunities. Um, although I have to say that on my list of cars that I must have before long is still my 1965 Mustang K-Code Fastback. So at some point, I'll have to uh, find one of those. Maybe that might be my next one. I love it. Can you disclose the past two cars that you purchased? You mentioned uh, them briefly. I think the viewers <laughs> might want to know. Sure. Uh, when I was in Italy last winter, I bought a 1962 uh, Lancia Appia Series 3 four-door sedan. A terrific car, amazing build quality. Uh, Lancias are one of my favorite brands in the world. I've had a lot of them, and I absolutely love them. And uh, I bought that in December. And then in uh, January, I bought a 1969 Moretti Cinquecento Sport. A uh, beautiful little custom-bodied version of the very basic Fiat Cinquecento, but this is anything but. With a beautiful uh, Italian coach-built body and a uh, slightly uh, hotter uh, Moretti uh, engine. Uh, a two-cylinder, air-cooled masterpiece. That sounds amazing. Hopefully we see that duo at Cars & Coffee this this summer. Absolutely. Okay. All right, this is a tough one. Who has the best taste in cars, Antonio, Ben, or Sean? Uh, is there an option there for none of the above? <laughs> I, I, think, I think we could do that. <laughs> they each have very different taste in cars, although I think that um, Antonio and Ben are probably more open-minded than Sean might be, but Sean is such an incredibly dedicated and passionate enthusiast. The cars he knows, he loves. So I just think that uh, it's all about getting Sean into some different cars and maybe his uh, taste will widen. Awesome. We're going to throw it to our veteran car tour. What is your favorite pre-war car? Oh, gosh, that's really tough. I have fallen madly in love with very old cars. And uh, there is a car, actually, that's in the 
uh, Audrain Collections, which uh, I've not had the opportunity to drive any distance because it really needs a lot of fettling, but it's a uh, International Charette from 1901, a very rare car that's done the London to Brighton uh, run, I think about 12 or 16 times. And I'd love to have that on the roads of uh, Rhode Island. That would be an absolute scream. Great one-cylinder veteran. An unfortunate turn of events for Ben. He seems to be out of the race. That's why you shouldn't pick a BMW. My cart's leaking oil. We got no brake pressure. We just got problems. We got to retire. I'm not happy about it, but got to do what you got to do. Sad end to the day, but uh, you know we'll get them uh, get them next time. When are we going to try riding a motorcycle? If you don't want to ride on the street, what about a dirt bike? Well, that's an interesting uh, question. Uh, a dirt bike, I think, is actually scarier than riding on the street because if you fall, you get pebbles as well. But uh, there is a possibility that you might see me on two wheels at some point in the not too distant future. Uh, so uh, just keep uh, hanging out, watching the, the network and see what happens. You might be surprised. <laughs> okay, we're going to combine a couple questions here. Okay. We sort of answered it earlier on, but can they tour the Portsmouth, Portsmouth storage vault? Ah, uh, the answer to that question is yes and no. We uh, have frequently had some of our, our drain cars and coffee events at our drain park place up in Portsmouth. Um, but since that is a customer facility, we really like to preserve the... Uh, the the safety and security of our customers' cars. So that's something which uh, really is not likely to happen. But when you come up to uh, Cars and Coffee that we have there at uh, our Drain Park Place, you'll be able to take a look at some of the customer cars that are there um, at a slight distance. But uh, And some of our customers actually sell their cars at Cars and Coffee. So that makes it very easy for them. Oh, I'm catching up to Donald's. <laughs> I'm catching up to Donald. Okay. This is a, an interesting one. Have you and Jay Leno ever been friends? Of course, we're great friends. Uh, in fact, I've had the great pleasure of cooking dinner for him and his wife Mavis, which is always a, a great treat because Jay eats nothing green. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's always interesting when you cook a, a, a steak dinner with uh, pasta and uh, you make a salad that he just sort of looks at and says, what am I, a rabbit? Uh, so, no, yeah, absolutely. We're terrific friends. I love the guy. He's just so incredibly genuine and such a passionate enthusiast and a true friend. Well, in that vein, what is your favorite or fondest Jay Leno moment? <laughs> there are so many. Uh, we go back so far. But uh, I'd probably say uh, one of the first times we worked together on the Jay Leno's Garage channel, and uh, I brought my... 67 Lancia Fulvia Sport Zagato Coupe and Jay had never driven a Fulvia before and he was absolutely amazed by it as I knew he would be and that was really sort of the moment when we really bonded in a way about cars and experiencing cars that you haven't had the chance to do and I think that was a really a special moment and uh, I think about that often. <laughs> I can't tell if he brake checked me or not, but if he did, that's hilarious. Well, speaking of Italian cars, why do you like them so much? Uh, well, I love cars from all countries, but it's about national character. And the national character of Italian cars is much like this go-kart track. Um, everything seems to be built for passion. If you're driving a little Fiat and you're driving it to the market, you feel like you're on the Targa Florio. It's just an energy that the cars have and a way of, of making you feel as you drive them that is just very, very special. And English cars have their version of it too, and French cars and a lot of Japanese cars even. But for the Italians, it's also, it expresses the culture, which I love so much. Art, music, uh, 
food, people. It's just, just glorious, joyous. Well, what is your favorite car of all time? Is it Italian? <laughs> That's a question I cannot possibly answer because my favorite car is the car that I'm driving or about to drive or dreaming of driving. And um, it is such a tough thing. Let's see if I get him on the over-under. No. Antonio, you passed me on an illegal section of the track. Did you not see the yellow that was active? I know you're very focused. We have one last question. Why do you promote ABS? That's an excellent question, and after this uh, race, I'll be asking that uh, more and more. Actually, no, seriously, I promote ABS because it's so vital that people get to see and experience the birth and growth of the automotive passion among young people. And I remember when I was the age of the ABS guys and how I expressed my passion, and that is what it's all about. It's about access and, and sharing the passion. And these guys are absolutely nuts for what they do, and they live a life that I think it's really important for all of us to pay attention to. And they're fun. <laughs> well, Donald, thank you very much. I'll let you uh, focus and get back to the race and see if you can win this thing. Yes, please. I'm trying to drive. Do not talk to me. I'm trying to drive. Just leave me alone. I know what to do. <laughs> Don't lift until you see that checkered flag, Donald. It's my best Kimi Raikkonen. Antonio wins the Rhode Island Grand Prix! Ah. Uh. Alright, so we just finished our race. Had everyone Darwin's there. actually going to wear this in his drive home, too. Yes. The fact that I had to actually do this race without my glasses mm. is just proof of so my dedication to okay. yeah. promotion of the great ASB brand. Right. Because I always I stand know. for ASB. Mm -hmm. is ASB. It, is it a, uh, I don't, is that a, an excuse? <laughs> I don't an know. Excuse we got to look we at got the a lot to talk about. Maybe, maybe put it well, in the comments what you think. Well, look at the lap times. One of the things that's really interesting about these carts is the fact that when people make illegal bumps on you, it takes the power away from your cart. So you can't immediately repass them. But I think that this is something that these gentlemen studied in advance. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it takes about 10 seconds off usually. All right, let's go check out the lap times. Let's, let's go see. As you saw, my car had difficulties. A little oil leak, a little also, brake pressure Also, we had a yellow flag. It was a big situation. Uh -oh. Antonio. Yeah, Antonio oh, cheated. And, and Antonio that cheated is, that is absolutely oh, you know, you know, There's You'll footage. You'll the footage. No, no, no. I, I was being the nice guy. Yeah. I'm no longer going to be the nice guy. Listen, I waited for the carts to have full power, and then I just dusted you guys. No, it was because you saw that I was winning, and you're like, I need a clean track for myself. Hold on, let's see. How do, how do we get these lap times up Sean here? also ran out of fuel, so he had to leave I early. I ran out of diesel. That's right, baby. Well, there's, there's some problem because it lists no penalties for Ben Chester. Victorious. I think he picked up at least five. Wow. Six hundredths of a second. That was close. And Sean's got the weight on you, too. Wow. So this was fun. That was good. Thank you for 50,000 subscribers. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, R1 Karting. What are we going to do for 100,000? I think we should take the MP44 out and the marker car. No, I think let's do a rally challenge. Okay. Oh, I think, I think a rally challenge. We'll get, we'll get four <laughs> equal Lanchestratos. And we'll uh, go I'm up the I'm cool with it. Same, budget's about the same, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks for 50. On to 100. Thanks, brother.